some of the other p categories of investments are development capital funding now this is also sometimes known as minority equity investing where the idea is that the fund will take a stake between 5% to 25% depending upon the size of the investment and the percentage stake sought by the PE investor the idea of making the return is by earning profits from investing in a business which is of a high growth nature or the business which is looking at restructuring itself and revival of profitability and sometimes the publicly listed companies or even traded companies are also seeking private equity capital if they find that it is not uh, the markets are not conducive right now to raise money from public investors then they may seek investment from private equity funds even though they are publicly listed and then such a type of investment is specifically and then such a type of investment in the finance industry is called a pipe investment pipe which stands for private investment in public equity and the last category that is fourth category of p investments is distressed investing now obviously the name suggests here that the target company or the investee company is in some kind of distress with respect to profitability and the idea of the pe fund is to generate returns from a turnaround so in this case the vc fund may be purchasing the debt or the leverage or the bond investments of the company which are actually in bankruptcy or they are in default or they are in likelihood of a default of these loans the idea here is that such debt instruments often trade at steep discount to their face value since there is a high chance of default now which is imminent or the company itself is in bankruptcy right now then the such debt will be trading at extremely steep discount to its original face value and the basic point where the vc fund is investing here is to earn significant amount of money in case of a turnaround of such a business so when the turnaround in fact does happen the debt will recover very quickly to its face value and this will generate significant returns for the investor So now let's talk about the exit from an investment for a VC or a PE fund. The exit timing for a VC fund can range anywhere from as low as six months to over a decade or ten years. But most of the times, what history has observed, or historically, or historically has been observed, is that the average holding period of a PE or a VC investment has been typically five years. so that is the kind of an investment horizon that they invest in the company with let's look at some of the common exit strategies here first one a trade or a strategic sale now this will entail the exit from an investment by a vc fund or a pe fund by selling their stock holding or share holding to a competing firm of the target company so say for example uh, a company uh in the sector of telecom services has been invested in by the vc fund and from the date of investment 5 years have gone by and now the fund is looking at an exit and at the time of the exit they feel that ipo is not the right mechanism so they decide to sell their entire stake in that company to another telecom services company in the same geography or in another geography but it is still the same industry it is a competing firm so that would be termed as a trade or a strategic sale exit by the vc fund and the, obviously the most common form of an exit strategy is also an ipo where the investee company grows to a certain level and it has now be- become mature or a stable growth company where it would be a right time to take the company public and do an ipo that is an initial public offering as a result of that many times what happens is that the vc funds may offload a certain part of their stake in the ipo itself and then they sell the balance stake in the market through over the counter or on the exchange sale of their shares it could sometimes prove that this is a highly effective way or a tax efficient way of an exit from an investment because many countries or many geographies the 
gains the capital gains resulting from the share sale are taxed at lower rates another form of an exit is recapitalization not exactly a, uh, an exit but uh, the recapitalization means that the vc fund once the debt is repaid over a 3 to 4 year time frame from the target company's cash flows it will re-leverage the balance sheet and will pay out a huge amount of dividend to itself to make an initial return and then ultimately it will then after some years exit through a strategic sale or a IPO or a secondary sale which we are looking at the next point so in this case of a secondary sale where the VC fund feels or the VC fund exits the entire stake in the target company by selling it to another PE firm or another VC firm. So that is termed as a secondary sale. And obviously the worst case scenario or the unwanted scenario for a VC fund is the case of write off or liquidation. Where the investment has gone bad, the company has not gone anywhere, the sales have not grown, the business idea has, is not taken off and the company is running into losses in that case after certain years the VC funds can would be forced to write off or liquidate the investment at a minimal value so that is the most unwanted scenario and many VC firms in India actually are facing this kind of a situation where some of the big names uh, some of the big P firms have also faced a write off or liquidation Let's briefly touch upon the portfolio company valuation for a VC fund. How would you value a portfolio company of a VC or a PE fund? Because if it's a publicly traded company, then it's very easy. We have a closing trade price or a share price at the end of the day. And you can multiply the stake held by the VC firm in that company. And you can easily arrive at the value of the portfolio company. But the difficulty arises when the portfolio company is an unlisted one or is an early stage one company so how to value the company let's understand that the three most common approaches used by PE firms to value a company or target or an investee are one comparable company valuation where you will try and compare or compare your target company's business to a similar business which is already listed and arrive at certain trading multiples price to earnings multiple or an enterprise value to EBITDA multiple or an enterprise value to EBIT multiple and adjust it for the unique characteristics of the target or the investee company and then apply that multiple revised adjusted multiple to the financial metric of your company and that gives you the value of your portfolio company. So that is on the trading comp side where the comparable is publicly traded or a listing or a share price is available for that comparable company. You can also compare it to some of the recent transactions in the similar industry that have happened. So say for example, we are looking at a oil and gas company and you know that just two months back some PE firm had invested in another oil and gas firm at an X at an XP multiple or a Y V2 EBITDA multiple. So you can take that as a precedent and use that multiple to value your own company. So that is called precedent comparable company valuation. The next method is discount. The next method is discounted cash flow method. It's a very traditional method. You project the cash flows of the target company over a five year, seven year, ten year period and you discount it, discount them to a cert, at a certain discount rate and get the present value, you estimate the terminal value also and that gives you the discounted cash flow valuation of your portfolio company. And the last one is an asset based approach where the idea is to calculate the fair market value of all the assets and reduce the current outstanding liabilities and basically you are valuing the net worth of the company at this point. So that is an asset based approach of valuing the portfolio target or investee companies.